it's been forever that I did a command block video, but I want to talk to you about something. And it's going to be about the at executing player operator or at s. Why is this so important to me? I will tell you right now. You're currently in Forgotten Colonies, which is a mini game with command blocks. People will choose a team, which they will join. And each team will start in one corner of the map, which is surrounded by a world border. And then will try to gain as many points as possible. Once the game starts, team score will be shown to the side and many factors will give players points. They start with a little farm and some cows and can score points by handing them in to the capital. They can also spend emeralds or fish for points or very good items they may need. With that being said, I was working on a system that will allow the teams to trade points with each other. So teams that are behind can give items to opponent teams to both race the teams in points or to prevent another team from winning, which will give a massive depth to the game. If I hand in my gold ingots, I'll get more points and you'll see the shipments are being updated. When I reach 32, I will get bonus points and the next game I will start with a bonus reward. This is all done in the engine room and we completely revamped the engine room. The old engine room you may see in some of my older command block videos, they still had an insane amount of blue or repeat command blocks. We do not want blue command blocks ever again. When you have over a hundred, every time the server updates, you'll have a hundred times 20 updates per second, which eventually starts lagging the server. So we revamped a lot of things. There's some team scores are still being calculated on per tick, of course, because you have to. And some events are still running each tick, uh, like tracking the dead and like global flag blocks, etc., which is fine. When a shipment is done, here's the gold. It will trigger this stone and we'll do this all based on a redstone input. Think about the fact that all these, all these pillars you see here, were all on blues, all with this one. Execute if score matches the completed shipment score. That was a lot of load on the server. So now every time we complete a shipment, it sends a signal to this one. If players happen to exactly send to on the same time, it doesn't really matter because this will update all the checks. So it will check every shipment for every team. So that's fine. I noticed a glaring mistake in my shipments. The first one is a pretty hard command already, but what it does, it counts the gold I have in my inventory. So I can show it like this. Say I have two stacks of gold. The moment I press this button, you'll see count gold on the left being updated. It's 128. In fact, I only have 126 now, of course, because I handed in one shipment. So that's basically what it does. The reason I use executing player is to prevent one player being closer. In this case, it's not really important. Now I could simply use P here again. The reason you want to do executing player is very simple. Normally, I could, for example, say team is yellow. So you must be in yellow team if you want to execute this one. The first reason you want to use at S or as executing player is simply to not have to type the whole command again. So we know when this match succeeds, it is actually stored in executing player. And then we can always use at executing player from that way forward. This is the most basic reason why you would use executing player instead of at P. In this case, it doesn't really matter. We don't want to have a team specifically bound to this. If you are stupid enough to get in the enemy base and you want to hand in scores for them, I see no reason why you should, but you can you can, sure. If you want to, you can. If I were to go to the engine, I will go to one of my events. Now you see a much bigger reason why I would want to use executing player in this context. Because now we execute 
at a location and you don't want to keep typing that massive command because it has four parameters which is a bit much so that's another reason the mistake we found was actually in the second command block this is what happens i target the nearest player again and i check if he has more than two gold in his inventory if, as you can see on the right count gold says 128 and i done that of course with the first command block where i stored the amount of gold in the count gold dummy i don't clear or at that point as you can see i do run a clear but i clear zero in gold so why do i do this now you would maybe think hey you can just run the only the command to store the gold uh, no we don't want to because we don't want to store the result if they don't have any gold in their inventory plus it will give an error because the execute as requires of course a run so we clear zero and if i have zero gold in my inventory this command fails directly so it won't even execute the next command block the main problem of this specific command lay in the fact that i could hand in two ingots for one point so what happens when i have only one gold ingot i press the button this command found one matching item the right count gold is updated with one and lo and behold the next one is executed no player was found in this case perfect i have one ingot the second command block does trigger with zero ingots it does not trigger but no player was found anyway no problem yes problem what happens if one of your teammates handed in some gold earlier and still has some gold left so didn't hand in all the gold but just a few points just to show they are not ahead or anyone else in the in the base used another count gold operation to have any value in count gold that's the main problem then the nearest player would actually be the player with count gold higher than two with this condition so if someone else was walking around with count gold two and i had only one mine is not cleared but their inventory is cleared so that's ridiculous because this pu purely looks for any nearby player of course there's several ways you can catch this you can say okay he must be in a distance within three blocks of course that's a fix or you can even go ahead and you can say scoreboard players reset all can go of course this would also be an option then you know of course you have need an extra command block to reset every single shop in the end reset the count goal that would also be in solution this by the way is kind of interesting because normally you reset like this why is this because at all does not calculate offline players which is really weak so you always want to do the asterisks when you use a reset for example if you look at the blue banner returned normally when we stop the game we reset these now well this in this case it was never reset properly so even if i would say reset at all you just see my name disappear and the rest still stays there so you always use the asterisk to completely clear every data from your like 25 entities is way too many so that would be another solution but what would be much easier is to use execute as nearby player so you know it's always the closest players the same player as the one before regardless then you have several options if entity and for example you say if entity so i specifically say if the player that pushes this button that is closest to the button if he and only he has the scores count gold two or more run clear that executing player minecraft gold in gold two so we don't have to check it here again we because we know it crashes on this one already so it will never go to this one so i don't have to say this one has scores as well so as you can see now now we used executing player to make sure the player that presses the button or that is closest to which is usually the player presses the button we can make a whole case about that too it needs to be the player but in this case we just check the player that's closest without any condition so we assume that's the player pressing the button because there will be only just one player handing in goods in the store and if you're smart if you're 
like fighting somehow near the store with an enemy you're never going to press that button if he's closer it would be kind of interesting by the way it would actually be a very interesting uh, idea that if someone walks in your base and you're fighting him and he has gold with him for some magic reason and you press the button so he, he hands in his gold per accident and you get the points that would be pretty hilarious but in this case we always want the person that is pressing the button just the person that's closest he's pressing the button and we check him and it fails in any condition like if he doesn't have the two gold it's going to fail so having fixed that we have one gold bar handing it in this one does not run so we the first one runs of course we found one matching item the second one now doesn't run either so that's good let's get some extra gold works like a charm now i am sending my gold to the capital and it's only going to be me fun fact about the minigame you saw the day was, next day was happened you see the dropper now has this is the mailbox 12 iron for the players on day two so it's kind of interesting that's one of the events we have 12 days events and then it's fixed so we fix this what else happens of course we give home gold which is the score we keep track of the gold points we add one point so added one to send gold to capital for yellow now has 13 points in sending gold to the capital of course he has a lot more points because there's more elements being calculated it's maybe a bit far-fetched right now but basically this very long string will check every objective each tick so we check the player deaths player kills kill value which is because the player kills five points so we calculate it together and then we first blood bonus red flags returned etc 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 these are more flags diamond placed this is kind of funny if you mine diamond you get plus one if you place a diamond you get minus one else you can cheat the system of course so you want to make sure okay you mine diamonds you're not going to place them again because you have silk touch or something and then keep scoring that's something you have to prevent of course anyway the ones we were talking about is the home gold here and i've been doing a lot of gold tracking and you see the total score is already 85 here so we now know the second application of using at s or at executing player we want to make sure it's the player executing so you always follow it after you use at p without any sort of parameters why was this important so we're now here of course i can't hand it in you cannot gift yourself kind of interesting really simply say execute at player if entity is team yellow run to tell roll and again we check it's the executing player it is actually the real the player that's closest by and there's nobody else only then we check if that player has team is yellow now the next one is first thing you notice it's not conditional so i want to have them run both even if this one fails i want to have this one run and here i check the opposite of course if you're not yellow store the gold maybe better if we go blue as you can see i found 36 matching items on myself with the spider eye count spider eye there we go so we store the result then we have a conditional because now we never ever 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 want to have this player commune with this one and because this is the first conditional we still check if team is not blue in this case and then we clear well we've seen that one as well and then after that it actually doesn't matter anymore we know for a fact that it has the spider eye so i do hear an extra check but it's actually not necessary anymore because this one is conditional it will never ever happen if this one doesn't doesn't trigger so here we still check the scores we actually have two separate filters but i could hypothetically you could just simply do it like this and then you keep all the parameters in one specific tag so this would just do exactly the same of course and we remove one item on the 25th second on the 30th second so this works perfectly as well now this one doesn't make any sense to have right now because 
it's gonna be the closest player, else you never get end at this point. So you can just give it directly to the closest player, you don't have to check anything. Then we do a little action bar, you see that, how that works. And then we give, actually, the first player we can see in Team Blue, we also give the points. So, because you get one point, but the player in blue gets your trade, so he gets one point as well. And we just target one random player, doesn't matter who it is. If there's no one in Team Blue, Team Blue gets no points, of course, because there's no not going to be a Team Blue. But if there's anyone walking around in this entire world that is in Team Blue at that moment, and we limit one, and we give him one point into gifts. I personally always use another system, like this is Notepad++ in this case, to check everything. And then, because then I can, for example, the action bars, I can show you better things. Like if I have an oak wall sign, dreadfully built, by the way, they changed it like four times already. Newest patch, like newest Minecraft, again, they changed how it looked. Now they added these things in between, which is ridiculous because it's confusing as hell. But um, the thing is, the signs can have a front and a back text, etc, etc. So they had to change that. I don't know if I have an old one still. No, I only have the new ones. I had to change every sign in my command block, in every in the whole game. It was horrible. But as you can see, like a written book, I also just built it here because it's... I change the command, like if there's a chord changing or whatever, I change it here. Then I copy paste to the command block because there's no way. I made a written book guide earlier. I think I changed in the description, I changed the, like four times now. Like four times I had to change everything because they just there's just some developer at Mojang or Microsoft in this case that just keeps changing the commands. And I'm like, why? Like, stop touching it. And then they add like raw or they add these little app poster stuff. So we had one patch that was all done with like these slashes. Like, are you mad? So we had to change that too. But I do have a website for that, actually. If you ever are stuck or the command doesn't work in any of my videos, just go to this website, GamerGeeks. So I had some luck with this website. Uh, new code doesn't work, <laughs> of course, but old code does work. And it will give you a better command that actually should work in the newest version. Not always, obviously, but... Well, th this version was just cursed as fuck. I don't know who did that. This should be, like, slowly, very slowly removed from the company. This one has some trouble as well. It does work sometimes. It used to work better because I literally, uh, the, the broken one I imported and was good in one go. But I think, oh, this one looks a lot better. I think they fixed this one. Okay, so the very old ones they can actually import. That's good, that's good, that's good. But the other ones they cannot, so. It's, 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 it's Microsoft, it's, it's Microsoft with this cursed way of building stuff. So the most prominent way you would use it is when you want to target the location of the executing player. And you can do that by adding at s. Or oh, at, at S, officially, of course. What happens is you're going to target the, the location of the event that's happening. Which is very important if you want to, for example, show particles like heart. This is most visible on a repeat command block. And there are two methods you can really see the difference. If I target the location of the executing player, so I add at S, then you'll see the particles around the player. But if I would remove it, the particles will still be triggered by the player moving within a distance of three tiles, but the particles will actually be shown at the location of the events happening and not at the player executing it. So this is the most prominent visible difference why you would use at executing player. Well, this is for me the applications of at executing player. I hope you learned something and thank you very much for watching. <laughs>